Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking, and I'm looking today at a book from uh, LexisNexis, Tolly. It's another one of their taxation books, but very interesting from a number of perspectives. It's Tolly's expatriate tax planning for 2011-12 by Amanda Sullivan. It's this book here, you see, quite a heavy book, nice little plane flying off into the sunset. You've got a, quite a lot of detail on the back. It's difficult to see, so I'll hold it up to the camera. You can see, uh, basically, it uh, covers a very lot of detailed information. There's a nice index at the back, which you can see there. It's a heavy book, runs to 750 pages. You've got a standard structure, again, for Tollies, which is paragraph numbering in brackets at the sides to find the particular information you're after. Um, it does have very good, useful general information. It gives you examples about the sort of thing you might have. There are sort of planning points for various types of country you might be going to. There are obviously a lot of very detailed points concerning things like uh, residence and domicile. And they've got an interesting title on disguised remuneration, which is a current buzzword with the revenue. I like the uh, useful abbreviations and references at the front. And I also like the excellent preface, which sets out exactly what this book is about. Uh, I'm pleased with it. It's certainly very interesting if you're planning to uh, go abroad, uh, or if you've, you've already gone. At least it will give you some idea of the sort of planning requirements you might need. But certainly your accountant should have a copy. We've given it the title on the web, Key Issues in Future Planning, Explained and Updated to Reflect the Finance Act 2011. Big piece of legislation from the coalition government, which have, uh, basically is reflected in a large number of the current tolly. Uh, publications. We said at Richmond Green Chambers we were privileged to review the previous edition of this work and once again we're pleased and of course further enlightened um, by reading the new edition uh, for 2011 to 12 to see what in fact is happening and how changes are taking place. An expert author, Amanda Sullivan, covers the key objectives that come into play in cross-border employment uh, arrangements in all their permutations, I think, very well indeed. It's a thorough and extensive volume, nearly 2,000 pages uh, long, dealing with taxation of UK individuals um, working abroad and foreign nationals working here. From an employer's point of view, the key factors in expatriate tax planning centre on the way employment arrangements are structured, which will in turn affect both taxation and social security contributions. It's not surprising that the book discusses domicile and residence and taxation of general earnings before dealing um, and detailing the uh, implications of a host of other issues such as tax, NICs and uh, expense deductions and so forth. In our initial review, we described this extensive and thorough work of reference as definitive, and so it remains. This, however, is the updated edition for ne this year and next year, and it deals with all the relevant new material from the Act, the, the, the last Finance Act. It also covers the new exchange rate rules and the latest guidance from HRC on calculating foreign earnings, which is very helpful. Let me conclude by saying it's designed for ease of use and it's a reference book which we think you sh should sh save you uh, as the practitioner uh, quite a large amount of time, whether you be a lawyer or an accountant. Usefully, it provides extensive tables to cover all of the statutory instruments, cases and uh, both international and European legislation. And there are nine appendices with a detailed index which I showed you. So I'd like to thank Amanda Sullivan very much for this book and, and to LexisNexis Tolly for an excellent contribution for those people who need advice on what effectively is expatriate uh, tax law. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye.